We, uh, we fixed the glitch. I'm your host, Professor Thomas Henry Horan. He reads everything. Hello there, you lucky devils. You better bet your bippies the professor reads everything, as you shall see again tonight. Hi, Dave. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Gary. Hi, Melissa. So you're getting a, you're getting a, I won't call them bonus up. You should be getting a couple of premium streams a week, especially live streams. You should be getting a couple of premium live streams a week. So we're pre-gaming here on SpewTube. Maybe I didn't quite make that clear in the title of the video. My nose is itching. A tree pollen is in full bloom as it were. Hi, creepy crawl. Hi, baby bull. The two bobs, yeah, that's right. I, I I had that in mind when I was thinking of ideas for doing the theme for the show. I had that clip in mind. We just went ahead and fixed the glitch. That's just I could see the CIA guys explaining like to whoever, right? To to Roach Shield or to Kennedy or whoever. Well, not Kennedy, but so we just went ahead and fixed the glitch, you know. I had that in mind for years, for years and years and years to use as the theme to this show, in the theme to the show. Because then he says, just a second there, Professor, we fixed the glitch, right? Like a threat, right? Was that condescending enough? <laughs> My eyes are burning. Oh, Office Space, I love it. I love it. It's about quiet quitting. It's a movie about quiet quitting. <laughs> I like the fact that the computer programmers can't understand the error messages put out by this printer. It's Jennifer Aniston's best movie. Yeah, yeah, I do like that movie. It's a quiet comedy. Like um, Napoleon Dynamite. Well, I love the fact that he's constantly threatening to set fire to the building, set the building on fire. Stephen Root, what a brilliant actor. He's an underrated actor. Somebody did a video about how Mr. Lundegaard, Lundegaard? Lundberg? He's not that bad of a person. That's why you hate him so much. He's not a typical movie villain. He's a, he would be considered, uh, he would have been considered top-notch middle management in 1999. I, I think that's, yeah, he's not a bad person. He's actually, he's not a bad person. <laughs> and remember, he gets, he gets bobbed too. He gets Bob too. Don't forget that. Hmm. Yeah, Superman 3. Very underrated movie, actually. You know, that's... Yeah, it's the plot of Superman 3. An underrated movie, actually. <laughs> 
What was... Oh, yeah, case of the Mondays. No, man, no. I, You get your ass kicked for saying something like that. Also, what I like about the movie is it's not so much that he had that bad of a job or that he had that bad of a boss. It's that it wasn't the right job for him. I, I, that's what I like about that movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. I did nothing. It was everything I dreamed it would be. <laughs> they got their decimal point in the wrong place. And that was very realistic. They gave the money back, turned themselves in, gave the money back. They didn't get in that bad of trouble. Well, you know that um, Mike Judge, the creator, that's, did he play that? That's him. He was, that's, he's playing himself. He was a manager of TGI Fridays and he remembered having to give that speech and he, right. That's him in a cameo, right? I think that's him. And he did work there and he, he did have to do that to people as a manager. He, that, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I'm pretty sure that's him. And the TPS reports, yeah. You're not putting the new cover sheets on the TPS report. Everybody can relate to that scene. Did you get the memo? I just fucked up one time, that's all. And they just keep repeating what they're supposed to. Yeah, everybody's... That's happened to everybody. Yeah, the two bobs, those guys are hilarious. And what I it's one of those movies there's a character who tells the hero what he should if he had if he'd listened to this guy he wouldn't have got into trouble when his next door neighbor tells him well you don't need a million dollars to do nothing and take a look at my cousin he's broke don't do shit he's right you don't need and it's like in the big lebowski when walter's saying well do the handoff we'll get the money and yes, we'll go by the in and out. Some burgers, some beers, a few laughs, our troubles are over. You don't need a million dollars for that. You just need a couple of friends and a couple of beers and a couple of burgers. Maybe a couple of bowling balls. You don't need a million dollars for that. That's what I love about those movies. In Groundhog Day, when he first gets stuck there, remember Needle Nose Ned? You think he's an idiot. You're supposed to think he's an idiot. Ned is the one who figured it out. You're, you're seeing Ned on his last day when he's got it figured out. He doesn't know he's escaping yet. You don't understand. Ned has been there for a hundred years. And when he runs into Bill Murray, he realizes. He realizes. I think that's why he tries to tell him that they knew each other. He's trying to get Bill Murray's attention. See, in Danny Rubin's original script, I'm pretty sure that, and that's probably where that character came from, because in Danny Rubin's original screenplay, when Bill Murray finally wakes up and it's February 3rd, he realizes that Andy McDowell is stuck in Groundhog Day and he has to help her. You have to help the person after you. Needle Nose Ned had figured it out. Like he said, you know, hey, I know guys that live and die by the actual railroad tables, but I say, hey, it's all a big crapshoot anyhow. He's got it. His, he found his answer. He found his joy. 
And now he loves selling. I'm Ned the Bull. That's me now, Ned the Bull. You know, and he's got it all figured out. That was his his nirvana. That was his enlightenment. That was, it's really cool. It's really cool because you think he's just this annoying character, but he's got it figured out. And he tells Bill Murray two things. Hey, it's all one big crapshoot anywho. And number two, watch that first step. It's a doozy. <laughs> in Julius Caesar, in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, there's a scene, there's a cluster of scenes at the very crux of the play, the very big right before the assassination. It's March the 14th. It's the night before the Ides of March. If those guys had listened to their wives, none of this would have happened. I'm a people person, damn it. Yeah, I deal with the customers so the engineers don't have to. <laughs> That's what systems analyst means. I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. <laughs> that was literally what I did when I lived in uh, Hollywood. Um, There's another, all the great stories, it's like that. At the beginning of Old Brother Where Art Thou, the old man tells him, you seek a great fortune, and you shall find a fortune, though it will not be the fortune that you seek. And he was right. Um, at the beginning of The Hangover, when they see that mattress lying in the parking lot, if they'd looked up, they would have seen that guy. But they don't look up to see where the mattress came from. That's, they're being stupid. They're not curious enough to see where the mattress came from. Yeah. The beginning of Parsifal. He see they're sitting in the big dining hall of this castle and they're being served. And he's guest of honor. Not a guest. Well, he's an honored guest. But he sees this bejeweled serving dish, this growl, and it's being taken into a private room, private dining room. And he doesn't ask who. Who who's who gets that? If he had asked, he would know who he was, because he's this orphan child, and he he wouldn't go on all these adventures that he goes on, which he needs to go on, because he didn't know he was supposed to ask. If if he had known, if he had asked, and the question had been explained, he never would have had this amazing life that he had, that made him into the great knight that he became. That kind of thing. What's another movie that does that? Not just that the audience gets gets a clue of what's happening next, but well, at the at the very beginning scene of Reservoir Dogs, the snitch gives himself away to us and to the other characters if anybody had been paying attention. There's there's some other movies like that. Anyway, I'll get the episode going here in a second. We got nine concurrent viewers plus two. Yeah, would you mind telling us exactly what it is you do here? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's right, Anthony. What would you say it is you do here? <laughs> then Lundberg, it's Dennis Lundberg's turn. And Lundberg knows what's coming. You know, whatever became a Lundberg, they could do a sequel, whatever became a Lundberg, you know. Um, I was thinking at the beginning of Smokey and the Bandit. He tells him, because Big Ennis Burdett is obviously the devil, stirring up trouble, right?
You see little old legends never die. They just lose weight. That's not it. There was something in the very beginning. Well, he jinxes himself, right? As soon as he opens his mouth and brags about how brilliant his idea was. Breaker 1-9 for the bandit. <laughs> I got a smoky report for you. <laughs> oh, in Neighbors. In Neighbors. The beginning of Neighbors. John Belushi comes. There's no dialogue. His wife picks him up at the suburban train station. He tucked the L train out of Chicago, probably, out to the suburbs. His wife picks him up at the train station. They drive home. They don't say a word. He walks in the house. He turns on his... He fa he sits down to worship his God, his television, his fire, right? And it's screaming at him. He's watching the news. It's about all these middle-aged guys who died that day. One guy, one guy got hit in the head with a concrete block. One guy drove off the back of the ferry. All these, okay. His God is screaming at him. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. Not like you're going to die, but you know, you need to be aware. You're wasting your life. You're going to die. You know, you're going to die, right? So he turns the TV off, and as soon as he turns the TV off, ding dong, there's a new neighbor who who reminds, right? That That's another good one. That's another really good one. That's a great movie. John Belushi's best acting. He plays a middle-aged man. Yeah, that's a good movie. Because you notice... Oh, that that is interesting, Anthony, because his, you know, his God is screaming at him, you're going to die, you're going to die. Um, I like the ending of the movie, though. No spoilers. Great cast. Fantastic cast. But Dan Aykroyd's cat, you'll notice he's always needling John Belushi. When John Belushi finally stands up to him, he punches him in the nose. It's okay. That's what he was trying to get him to do. They're just trying to get him to live. They're, tr get, you know, they're, tr fall in love or get mad or do something. You're just rotting. You're just a rotting corpse. It's a brilliant movie. And that passive aggressive, Dan Aykroyd is the passive aggressive guy <laughs> and Kathy Moriarty my god my god yeah I didn't like 1941 I don't know I don't know Neighbors is filming in Staten Island. That is interesting. That's very interesting. I just assumed it was suburbs outside Chicago. Because Groundhog Day was filmed in Woodstock, Illinois, which is a cute little town. It is a cute little town. I think I ate at that diner. I think so. Okay, what should we do? There's 10 people. It's one of, it's a zany, you know, like it's a mad, 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 mad world. It's got funny bits in it, you know. Um, Cannonball Run is a good one with an all-star cast. Dean Martin, they, they get they get Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise to pull over, and it's Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. dressed as priest driving this Ferrari in this cross country illegal cross country race. Gets out of the car, and Dom DeLuise says, "Nice car, Father," and Dean Martin goes, "Thank you, asshole." <laughs> just the way, he, thank you, asshole. It just. And then Sammy Davis Jr., they get in their, they flatten the tire, they get in their car, they're going to drive off, and Sammy Davis Jr. is just, he's so gleeful when he says, why don't you take that piece of shit back to the junkyard? <laughs> yeah, he's just so... <laughs> 
That's a good movie. That's a good movie. Because Dean Martin was a real bare-knuckle boxer. And in that fight scene they have with those stunt guys, you can tell, man, Dean Martin could actually box. Oh, thanks, Earl. I'm going to take all the encouragement I can get. Who directed Animal House? I haven't seen Animal House in a long time. That kind of started the whole thing. Um... American Graffiti is a good movie. American Graffiti 2 is not a bad movie, but American Graffiti is a good movie. They're putting conspiracy notes in food packages? Oh, Used Cars is a wildly underrated movie. Kurt Russell and um, Jack Albertson. That scene where Jack Albertson dies is hilarious. It, it's the funniest death scene of all time. And just some of the things Kurt Russell says, like, you know, he's running for city councilman. And he's he's trying to make something of himself, you know. And he expresses this desire. And he said, I don't know, may, maybe meet some broader has your shit halfway together. <laughs> that movie is hilarious. John Landis, that's right. Yeah, used cars, man. That's not, that's an underrated flick. Um, boy, there have been some good movies for free on YouTube. Some classic movies. You talk about a movie. Talk about a movie about an insurance investigator. Let me just hold on. Let me shit. We'll come back to all of this. Let me just new tab here. Ah, uh, let me go to my spew tube. Maybe I better not put this on here. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube. Uh, wrong account. Then I'll get the episode going. Haven't seen the October Man yet. I haven't seen the Upturned Glass yet. Somebody uploaded Korg 70,000 BC. Remember that? I remember watching a couple episodes. Because I was a little bit older then and it was in scientifically interesting. You know, I was interested in archaeology and stuff like that. I'd, and then I forgot all about it until somebody uploaded all 12 episodes of Korg 70,000 B.C. It was a dramedy. It was mostly it was a drama. It was an action-adventure show about a Neanderthal family from 70,000 B.C. They tried to keep it as accurate as they could. Yeah, it wasn't like... It was actually pretty good. Um, um... Is this British... Fright from 1956. It's interesting. I'll talk about it sometime real soon. It's interesting. It's a movie. It's a movie about gaslighting. Okay. And then there was. Um, well, there's several I haven't seen. Highway Dragnet was a good movie. It's one of those wrong place, wrong time movies. Bunny Lake is Missing, directed by J.B. Pritzker. Not J.B. Pritzker. Not Sam Peckinpah. Oppenheim, not, not, not Robert Oppenheimer, damn it. 
He directed Anatomy of a Murder. Otto Preminger. Otto Preminger. Buddy Lake is Missing, starring Cardulia. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Cardulia? Cardulia? And Sir Lawrence Olivier. Lawrence Olivier plays a homicide detective. Bunny Lake is, well, plays a police detective. The Young Savages, John Frankenheimer's movie about teenage delinquent street gangs that Monty Python parodied in their um, skit about the old ladies terrorizing people on the streets. Somebody uploaded the Bridget Ramagan now. Maybe the Golden Salamander. The Informers, the Informers, a British, a British uh, crime thriller. The Nigel Patrick, all star cast. The Informers, that's a damn good movie. I haven't watched Dear Murderer yet, but that popped up. Haven't seen Green for Danger yet. Sapphire is good. Sapphire, 1959. It's a British movie about the murder of a young woman. It's a very social drama about a murder. That's a really good, really good, that's a really good old-time 50s movie. Across the Bridge? I haven't seen that one yet. The Turning Point? I haven't watched that one yet. Boy, I got some stuff to watch. The Solid Gold Cadillac. Chicago Syndicate, that's not a bad movie. Somebody uploaded the original 1938 Gangs of New York. Now, I just watched... That must be it. Bunny Lake is Missing. Is that the one I'm thinking of? And... And um, Sapphire. Those are two really good. Blonde for a Day with Hugh Beaumont. Hugh Beaumont plays. This is actually weird. When was this movie made? 1946. Hugh Beaumont plays a very early version of the wisecracking, tough guy, private detective. And he's not the slightest bit convincing in it. But the plot is good. It's called um, <clears throat> Blonde for a Day. 1946. Okay, let me get the episode started. To the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth with... Um, that great early actor, Powell. Not Jerome Powell. This is about international uh, opium smuggling. A very realistic movie. Around 1945, maybe? 46? Oh, The Scapegoat with Alec Guinness. I think he's maybe the... By, well, he's by far the most overrated movie actor of all time. He hated movies. He hated doing movies. And it shows in every movie he was ever in. But the... The movie's good, and he's perfect for this movie. It's called The Scapegoat, based on the book by Daphne du Maurier. Betty Davis is in it, too. There's a really interesting one. It's called Call It Murder. 
1943, Hunt with Humphrey Bogart, very early Bogart film. They found like an original negative and 4K'd it. And with crystal clear audio, you see and you hear the movie the way you would have seen it and heard it in a theater in those days when, you know, not the scratchy, blurry, you know, they were really good. It's not a great movie, but you can, you, you know, you're in a movie studio. Like when you watch it on a big screen TV, it, the characters are life size. You can hear that you're in a studio. The audio is that crystal clear. It looks like early television. It's really interesting called Call It Murder. It's one of those, it's a jury movie. So, you know, it was like a TV show. It used to be, it was a stage play. Hot Cars is not bad. Passport to China. Underworld USA. Underworld USA. They have uh, somebody put up Deadfall, the Michael Caine movie. The Deadly Affair, that's, that's okay. <laughs> the Chairman, the Chairman with Gregory Peck has been uploaded. Okay, let me get this episode going. It's by no means a complete investigation. It's an ongoing investigation. It's an ongoing investigation into things that have been happening lately. Okay. Okay, let me get this going. Need to start recording. So uh, the live stream should already be happening. It's still happening, right? Oh, Electro Glide in Blue. Yeah, it's a, I like that. I like Robert Blake movies a lot. Corky is a fantastic movie. Yeah, Underworld USA. Yeah, right. By, the, by 1960, they were just drive-in movies. Yeah, he thought um, he he wouldn't talk about Star Wars for years. He did that movie for the money. And the thing about it is, maybe he understood this before anybody else. You understand, Obi Wan Kenobi's not a good guy, right? He's he's his vanity is responsible for as many problems as anybody anything else in that universe. And what he does to Luke is very manipulative. And it's he's not a good guy. Obi-Wan's not a good guy. My friend pointed out once that when Luke is all these um, Jawas and these sand people are closing in on him and they see Obi-Wan Kenobi coming and they all scatter, he goes, obviously he slaughtered dozens of Jawas. <laughs> They're terrified of the sight of him. Okay, so good night, YouTube. Get signed up on the premium channel. And I'll see you guys over there, and we will do this premium episode. It's going to be primarily about that whole Hero121 email address and what might be going on there. I think I may have cracked something pretty big, pretty wide open in that case. So let's head over there and talk about that. Yeah, and like the way he did it, and he did it so that Luke would get mad and go after him for revenge, which is what got, which is what dragged Anakin into the dark side in the first place. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. Oh, the Castle Quadrophenia? I hadn't thought about it that way. Okay, I'll before I okay, let me get this episode done. My eyes are burning. 
So good night, YouTube. Good night, Spoon. Good night, Moon. Good night, YouTube. Everybody get signed up. Click the links in the description of this video you're watching on YouTube now. Get signed up. You're missing some fantastic material. You mean reconcile? <laughs> I couldn't let it go, Earl. I just couldn't let it go. Sorry. That's why they call me the professor. <laughs> he reads everything. He nitpicks everything. Thank you all very much. We'll see you over there for the premium live.